Good morning, virtual learners. It's our eighth virtual session. So I hope you are already you are all again and again and again that you are already ready for our next session of learning and fun. So for the last two meetings, what we have discussed, we have discussed the speech writing process, and last week I discussed with you the different tips on speech writing. All right. So for this morning, this would be our most essential learning competencies. Our most essential learning competencies would be uses of effective speech writing on audience profile, logical organization, duration, word choice, grammatical correctness. So what about this one? For this morning, after learning about the speech writing process and the different tips on speech writing, we would now try to contextualize and put that in application. Next one, I will provide an overview on how can we distinguish now the types of speeches, specifically according to purpose and according to delivery. Are you ready? Let us start. So for this morning, I will share with you a 16-year-old speech that we delivered back when we were in high school in Valenzuela City Science High School, which is now called Valsai. So here is the teacher's task. Prepare and write a three-minute speech about yourself to be delivered in front of the class. Okay, so again, this, this was a 15-year-old speech that was delivered way back in 2005. And this was delivered in front of an audience, which are third-year high school students during that time and our teacher. So first is let us recall the different, the speech writing process. So as I recall, we have three main parts. So we have the rewriting, the writing proper, and the editing part. So let's have it one by one. Let us deal with the conducting an audience analysis. It was mentioned before that in order to create and write your speech, it is, it is important that we have to know our audience first so that we can actually adjust our language and our approach in terms of jargons, in terms of whether uh, we have to, to level up our English or not. So it depends on our audience. So here is an example. So with that task in mind that was given by our teacher, this has been our audience analysis. So the age range would be from 14 to 15 years old. And then the male-female ratio is an estimate of 18 female and 10 male. The educational background of this audience would be third-year high school students, which happened in 2005. But if you will contextualize them at present, they are grade 9 students. The educational institution is Valenzuela City Science High School, which is Valmasai at present. Place of residence in terms of city or town is Valenzuela City. Language spoken, Philippine or English, and economic status is from low to middle class. So upon knowing our audience now, this time around, we have to determine the purpose of the speech. We have to select a topic, narrow down a topic, and how are we going to gather data for this speech. So here is the setting, the purpose, and the topic. For the general purpose is we have to inform, to inform her, them something about myself. So that is the specific purpose. For the topic is uh, I thought of sharing with them about my dream career. So for a specific topic, uh, for, uh, after that dream career, uh, may I have to tell them the reasons why I chose my dream career is specifically teaching. And then for the data gathering, uh, I would use my notes on self-reflection and observation around. Are you following? Now let's move on to the writing proper. So next would be we have to select a speech pattern. So I believe you can still recall those speech patterns that were discussed with you for the last meetings. And then now we have to prepare an outline. So as I recall, what are the two kinds of outline? So we may have a table format and a title format. Okay. So here is our uh, for, uh, so outline. For the purpose, of course, it is to inform our audience. Next specific purpose, tell the audience something about myself. Specifically, why should I pursue my dream career? For our pattern, we may use the biographical because it will talk about myself. And so here is our outline. For the introduction, I may share a quote about the youth 
in general and then what is the correct impression on the use today and then for the body we may have for the different points share the different supporting points leading to your dream career and for the conclusion state the specific purpose of your speech again and call for action so here is now let us prepare the, the introduction create the body and prepare the conclusion so see if you would prepare this kind of process and follow this step-by-step -step process it would be easier for you to draft your speeches so here is a speech outline so let us start with the introduction so usually we may uh, divide the introduction into three main parts. So we have the attention catcher, the thesis statement, and the preview. So let me read with you the quote that would be shared on the speech on the attention catcher. Use, I am the use, and certainly I am the hope of my motherland. In me lies the future of Mother Philippines. For the thesis statement, my dear classmates, they are mistaken. The only side, the negative side of me, but beneath this body is a heart full of hope, dreams, and ambition. And for the preview of what would be the speech all about, each one of us was given a task and duties to fulfill. My fellow students, I believe that we should take the path given to us. So for the body, uh, I have enumerated here four different points. So for the first main point, I recall of when I was in 12 years old and then for the second main point uh, what I see or what people see about education third main point would be uh, how important knowledge is and for the fourth main point what I should be expecting in the future all right so you may use that as you do along your speech and for the conclusion part so we have the history statement we have the main point summary and the clincher part. So the clincher part would be your uh, farewell or parting words with your audience. So make sure that this is very striking, okay? So are you ready now? So for this, uh, for this period on, I would try to share with you the whole, uh, the whole speech that I made way back in 2005. Okay, so allow me to deliver it as well. I hope I can still give justice to this. So this one, youth, I am the youth, and certainly I am the hope of my motherland. In me lies the future of mother Philippines. Some say that the current generation of youth are irresponsible, that we cannot help uplift the nation because of our age. Only those old and mature people who are strong and brave are capable. My dear classmates, they are mistaken. They only see the negative side of us because beneath this body is a heart full of hope, dreams, and ambition. Each one of us was given tasks and duties to fulfill. My fellow students, I believe that we should take the path we intend to take. Twelve years old, I dreamed of becoming a simple teacher. The one who will share learnings, impart lessons, and help the children as they climb the ladder to their dreams. Because for me, education is not just receiving a piece of paper with someone's name printed on it, or as we call diploma. I consider education a fight in which we should win wisdom. Furthermore, knowledge for me is the most important thing that I can share to the next generations. And now, I am already a third year high school student, and after two years, I will take the path I have chosen for me. I know I have to be brave and strong because college life will be a real struggle. But this hardship will not hinder me from moving ahead. Again, they are mistaken. And I can prove to them that I am a person full of hope, dreams, and ambition. I will be the person I wanted to be. And I will follow and do the mission given to me. Finally. I would like to impart to you some words from Acts chapter 20, verse 24. The most important thing is that I complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus gave me. My fellow youth, let us reflect on these words and may we continue moving towards our mission. Thank you. Okay, so that is about a, a sample application of the speech writing process and how you would apply the tips on writing a speech so this time around let us move on to the types of speeches 
So let me start with types of speech according to purpose. This time around, I will just share with you overviews and keywords relating to these different types of speeches. Because later on, on the following episodes that we will have together, I will discuss with you these different types one by one. So that we will have this main focus on a specific types of speech. So these are the different types of speech according to purpose. So we have three under this purpose. We have informative, entertainment, and persuasive. So what are the keywords that we may associate with these different types of speeches? So for the first one, in the informative speech, the goal here is to give information or details about a concept, policy, or idea, or to what I have shared with you, you may also share information about a person. Okay? So the main purpose is to inform, to give something. Next, entertainment, uh, on the other hand, would be the main purpose is to amuse the audience by giving you more or making them laugh. So it's a feel-good presentation. How about the persuasive part? So here, we provide acceptable ideas that can influence decision or make them act. Okay, so when we do persuasive, so among the three for me, the most uh, difficult is the persuasive speeches because this one should uh, be well thought. At the same time, it should encourage people of the point of what you are telling them uh, another second to that would be entertainment speech why because the main goal is you have to make them laugh you make you should make your audience feel good about the certain certain episode or activity okay so on this part i would share with you some snippets or pictures and i want i, I need your help I want you to identify which specific type of speech, according to purpose, is being presented by just seeing these pictures. So again, as I recall, we have informative, persuasive, and entertainment. Are you ready? Just type the words on the chat box. Okay, let us have the first set of pictures. So we have here a classroom, right? And then we have here... I guess this is a teacher giving his or her speech. So what do you think is a type of speech being presented here? Okay, I'm waiting. You just have to type it down. I believe this one is just very easy for you. This is an informative speech. How about the second one? Okay, so this one is very timely, all right? So the picture was way back in 2016, but then uh, comes next year, I believe we will have another set of these people. Okay, so this one is a presidential debate in 2016. So with this kind of debate, what kind of speech is being used here or being utilized? Please comment on, comment it now. So the answer here is, it's a persuasive speech. Of course, they have to persuade the people to vote for them and believe them. Next one. Okay, so I know this face is very familiar with you. That whenever we, we, we see her, we anticipate that we will be laughing, right? So of course, with that particular word, laughing, and it's, you know, vice ganda, it is an entertainment speech. How about the next one? Okay, so I don't know if you have seen this person, but you can see his page from YouTube or from Facebook. So he is Nick Wikik, wherein he says here, the greater the struggle, the more glorious the triumph. So he is actually a motivational speaker. So being a motivational speaker, it means that he also persuades, therefore, he delivers persuasive speeches. Next one. Okay. Can you read and or can you see what I am seeing? It says here, Matang Lawin. And we have here, Kuya Kimachensa. Of course, in his episodes on Matang Lawin or ABS-CBN, he delivers here, trivias, right? And some information about 
about science, about animals, or about nature or the environment. So he delivers informative speech. Good job. Okay, last but not the least. Okay, so we have here this person. I don't know if you're familiar with him. So he is Alex Calleja, a stand-up comedian. So from the pictures itself, you can already tell what kind of speech he delivers, right? So I'm seeing comments right now. This last one delivers an entertainment speech. Okay, so we need this one from time to time and we need a good laugh, right? Okay. So moving on, so we have, uh, so we are done with the type of speeches according to purpose. So this time around, let us have the types of speech according to delivery. So if the type of speech according to purpose has three types, this one, this time around, we will have four for the delivery. Namely, we have memorized, impromptu, manuscript, and extemporaneous so as what i mentioned a while ago i will just provide main points or keywords so that we can be familiar with this one so we have here when we say memorize a speech of, of course the keyword here is memorize memorize so this one would need memorization skills wherein you are as a speaker you are to require you are required to memorize the material in order for it to be delivered in front of an audience next impromptu would mean the spur of the moment when we say the spur of the moment this one happens inside the classroom when the teacher instantly calls you for a recitation so it is a spur of the moment because you will share with the audience or your classmates what you have in mind or what is your answer to that particular question of your teacher and the manuscript speech let's see copy of the speech the manuscript itself refers to the copy of the speech, all right? So here on the manuscript speech, you would observe that the speaker, okay, would have the opportunity to have his or her own speech on hand while delivering the speech. So meaning there is something that he or she reads in front of his audience. Next, for the extemporaneous part, this one is note card is the key, meaning the speaker here would have an outline or note card in order to deliver his or her speech. Not like the manuscript because the manuscript would mean the whole speech for the extemporaneous. You just have key cards, no? Wherein this uh, keywords or some points of the speech is indicated there as a guide for the speaker. So I know you have still have lots of questions in mind, but uh you may have you may type it down so that later on on the uh, on the next episode that we will have i will address that because what i can guarantee you is that this seven types of speech specifically on the type of per according to delivery and purpose will be discussed in total on the following episodes we will have. but i have this question in mind that i believe you will also ask so i have here a blank thought bubble but i will deliver the question anyway uh is it possible to have two or more purposes in your speech while you deliver okay if you would try to observe the speech that i have presented with you a while ago uh, about what i have presented when i was in third year high school uh the main purpose might be to inform but at the, at the same time the the tone of the speech there would also want to want uh, to persuade the audience by clinging onto their dream and working on it okay so it is possible but there could be times wherein as you inform your audience you also entertain them so that you would gain their uh their participation and interest right so it is possible to have two or more purposes in one speech delivery okay so that would be all i hope I have given you some inspiration on how you would work on your speeches since I have presented to you the theory, the steps on how to write it, the tips on how to write it, and now we have the application. So with that, my virtual students, happy learning. See you on our next virtual meeting. Goodbye.